the young lad, for example, someone who goes to college or university, they may counter that. I don't care. Like I'm going on with my life as normal. I wake up, I go to school, I go to college, I go to university, I eat, I drink, I have friends and I come home. I don't see a need for religion in my life in order for me to fulfill anything. Like it's not hindering me from doing anything else. I'm getting along, I'm going to get a job, I'm going to have a house, I'm going to have everything materialistic like the same. I'll have all of those things in my life, so why do I need to then worship a God? Why do I need Islam? Why do I need to go to the masjid? Why do I need to adhere to strict Sharia rules? X, Y, Z. That's the counter question. A standard, normal, I believe, uh, from my experience, a 21st century teenager or a young Muslim would say, I don't need Islam because it's not providing me with anything. I already have anything without it. What would you say to that? That's a very relative concept in the sense that when he says he has all the material needs to fulfill his desires and to live a materialistic lifestyle, and he says he has no need of religion, there are a few ways of making him realize why he needs being Islam. Number one, he can face sudden death. The way he faced sudden life, he had sudden life, he didn't choose to live, he came unto earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his soul unto the earth. But the one who sent his soul can take his soul. So sudden death, when his soul is taken, that is when his iman will benefit him. So it's like a pension plan. These people, they aspire to live so long, so many of them, they have pension schemes, pension plans, and they place some percentage of their wages into a pension scheme, and then they intend to benefit from that pension in decades to come. But there is no guarantee they will live to that age. Similarly, when he faces a crisis on earth, he will turn to Allah. And that can happen suddenly to anyone in terms of person contracting cancer, a person right. contracting AIDS, a virus due to the lifestyle that he may live. He could contract the dismemberment of an organ the removal of an appendage, his arms being removed. And at that point, the person realizes their neediness to the Creator, to Allah. So if someone is in the prime of their youth, the prime of their wealth, and the risk sustenance is coming to them with ease, that leads to a type of istiqlal, meaning a type of arrogance that a person develops. But that arrogance is broken very easily within a few minutes. A person's arrogance could be finished at any moment. Rather than being thankful to Allah after they face that problem, it is better for a person to be thankful to Allah when they have the favors of Allah. Because then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase their favors, the favors that are bestowed upon them. So, in shakartum, la azidannakum. If you are thankful, la azidannakum, I shall increase you. So, by being thankful to Allah, you are increased in your favors. How many bad things are diverted through sadaqah alone? Just through feeding poor people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala diverts so many calamities from an individual. So, the response to that person would be that you need Allah, even though you may believe you are unaware of that at the moment. Do not wait for a time of calamity. Now, some people will still have that arrogance, but eventually the arrogance is broken. Like